Hello. Kevin, how's it going? It's uh, D. Simon here calling you. Oh, hey, D. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I just, uh, I'm actually standing in a store right now, so I forgot about you. Oh, shit. Outside, Do you want me to call you back, or uh, we can call you in like 10 minutes or so? Yeah. So, actually, you know what? Let's just do it right now. Let's do it. All right. Okay. I got my co-host here, Harrison, as well. Hey, Hi, Harrison. All right. So, uh, Kevin, thanks for being on the show. Should I call you KB or Kevin? You could call me uh, Kevin. You could call me KB. The secret's out, I guess. Some people know See? what I do. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> My yeah, parents yeah. now know what I do for a living, so you're not really hiding anything. <laughs> yeah, I figured, uh, you, you know, you, you've, you've been interviewed by a few different media organizations, so it's probably not too much of a secret. So, uh, no. Ke- so uh, Kevin, you're a sex tape broker. Um, what, what exactly is that? What was a sex tape? Well, among other things, I uh, I'm really a little bit of everything. I'm, I'm a Renaissance fan. I uh, I field celebrity sex tapes, obviously, through all the media that I've done over the years. People still come to me every day. You know, actually, I won't say every day, but I'll say every week. There's something that comes my direction mm-hmm. that uh, requires my uh, my tutelage, so to speak. I uh, I serve more or less as like the Fred G. Sanford of celebrity sex tapes. So it's like yeah, a junkyard. It's like Sanford and Sanford. A junkyard yeah, of sex like, tapes? <laughs> I run a junkyard. People come in. They think their stuff's worth millions of dollars. I have to explain to them they're big dummies. And uh, no, it's not worth that kind of much. <laughs> so how did you get into this? I, I mean, I read that your first tape was uh, the Paris Hilton tape, uh, One Night in Paris. That's correct. Well, what happened was the, the, Pam, and Tom, the Pam and Tommy Lee tape happened, and a guy by the name of Seth Warshawski up in Seattle, Washington, put that out. Uh, I had met some associates of his that were up in Seattle as well that came to me and said, hey, listen, you're down in L.A. We got this tape of a girl named Paris Hilton. Can you vet it for us? And I'm like, who's Paris Hilton? Yeah, she wasn't even that said, big well, back then. Nobody knew who she was outside of the heroin addicts and club kids and trust fund kids in L.A. I mean, yeah. she was partying and we would say, I mean, looking back when she described what she looked like and, and who she was, I recalled this girl being in several of the clubs that I used to see her in. Uh, but she was hanging out with some really, like, messed up girls, you know? Uh, but anyway, well, they explained man. that she was, the, she was the heir to the Hilton uh, Hotel fortune. So mm. I said, well, what do you guys want to do? I, I looked at the tape. It seems to be this girl. Uh, I met with the roommate of the guy who's banging her in the tape, Rick Solomon. And he says oh. he's got the rights to it. So is that the is that the way it usually works? It's like an ex boyfriend that Spurn wants to make a few bucks off his like you know D list celebrity ex girlfriend, or how does that work? Sometimes, sometimes you get that a lot. Um, these days, you know, obviously they just pass a lot with revenge porn, which makes it almost oh, yeah. almost impossible to do that. Um, but yeah, back in the day, it was more or less either the ex lovers or don't forget, you know. We started making stupid people famous way before the Kardashians. You know, there was all these reality shows that all of a sudden somebody who was a nobody that you might have gone to middle school or high school with is all of a sudden a celebrity or celebrity as I call them. <laughs> and now all of a sudden they want to cash in on their fame. Oh, I saw this girl on TMZ. She must be worth something to cash in this tape I have of her blowing me in high school or her, or her blowing me in my dorm. But then they come to me and I have to explain to them, you don't have the release from her stating that it's okay to put this tape out. So you will get sued. Um, and that's what happens more often than not. Now, we okay. do have a lot of cases where phones get stolen or laptops mm. get stolen from the airport, for instance. Um, those are things that happen. I, I actually had a computer once that was purchased on Craigslist that once a guy uh, added some drivers to, popped up all of this crazy hardcore stuff of a very famous uh, Las Vegas performer. Ooh. And that was all S&M and really bad, bad, bad news. <laughs> so, Is it Carrot Top? Uh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. But you're on the right track. You're on the right wow. track. I'll all just right, say this, right. guy, this guy had a lot more juice than I ever thought he would have and a lot more money <laughs> than I ever thought he'd have. So I'm so a little scared of him. So when you come across something like, uh, like, a stolen, like a stolen hard drive or something, you can't really do anything with it. Because, I mean, do, well, do, you, do you have to seek authorization from everybody that's involved in the tape before it can be released? Yes and, yes and no. Um, it depends on the situation. Obviously, if you're talking about stuff that could be, you know, really explosive, very inflammatory stuff that could, you know, cost somebody uh, you know, 
hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars in sponsorships. Sometimes the celebrity will, through an intermediary or lawyer, uh, just secretly buy it back, you know, and, and I might work to broker that deal. That doesn't happen every day. It's happened several times. Uh, in other cases, I've helped shut down some of this stuff. And in other cases, I've just purchased it myself and I keep it in my safe. And uh, you just never know. <laughs> Someday it might come in handy. That kind of sounds a bit like a bit sketchy, a bit like extortion. Like, I mean, do, do, do the celebrities like do you contact their reps and say like, hey, I have this tape. It's going to come out eventually, regardless of what I do. Maybe you guys should just purchase a copyright. and We'll make some money from this. You know, that isn't the exact verbiage, verbiage that's used. But, yeah, just about in some cases that might happen. I, I, I refrain from using the term extortion because extortion seems very, very dirty, very, uh, a very gray area. Uh, I like to use the term copyright acquisition because let's say you film yourself having sex with your wife at home. Right, like a Hulk Hogan situation. Well, Hulk Hogan's different because of the girl's girlfriend of somebody else. But <laughs> let's just say you and your wife are having sex. There are two copyright holders there. It could be a possible third, depending if the person filming it owns the camera that they're filming it on. So sometimes you might be dealing with a three-way copyright. So it's, it's not only your copyright, your wife's copyright, but let's just say it's your wife's phone and she puts it on a tripod. Well, she actually owns the phone. If she's paying the bill on that phone and she could prove it's her phone, she is the copyright holder and has ownership rights. Mm. So it gets really slippery sometimes, and that's why I deal with some of the best lawyers here in town. Yeah, I imagine you probably want them uh, covering your ass with this. Have you ever come across, like, any old stuff, like, you know, old films oh, yeah. of Sharon Tate, or, like, here's Fatty Arbuckle banging his stripper in 1922? Or... I, uh, I'm going to give you guys an exclusive that I don't think I've ever told anybody, but uh, famous though you guys are associated with complex and everything and people will actually probably see it like this. Um, I saw the King of Late Night. I saw Johnny Carson. He had the uh, incredible <laughs> tape that was shot on a uh, eight millimeter back in like 1973-74. Wow, uh, guy comes in His wife, oh. Joanne. And uh, it turns out, <laughs> turns out he had three wives named Joanne. Did you know that? I had no idea. I didn't know that. Actually. No, I didn't know that. Weird. Three different wives by the name of Joanne. Now that's kind of rare. Was but, Ed uh, taping it? Have... <laughs> Hello. Uh, no, it, you know, they're by their pool. And she's got like a bouffant hairdo, and he is, there's a reason why they called him the king of late night. I mean, I'm talking, <laughs> dude was huge. He mm. was big. Wow. And all, all these years later, the guy who brought it to me, I'm like, how did you get this? Uh, he said that a friend of his owned a film lab in Fullerton, and obviously they had transferred film to back then three quarter inch Umatic, which was the, the predecessor to uh, VHS. It was a really big tape back then. And I guess Johnny had all his stuff basically transferred to film, or from film to video, and all these videos existed. I remember having to find a three quarter inch Umatic wow, <laughs> player to play this thing. It's crazy. So what but, can you do with something like that? Well, at that point, I approached uh, Johnny's estate, and it was run by his nephew. The uh, the nephew was adamant about not doing anything with it and threatening anybody that would touch it. Um, and usually, sometimes that's where it just ends. You know, uh, same thing with Tupac, a sex tape that came my way. Once it gets approached to the estate, the estate shoots it down. Then you're pretty much on the radar, and then they're looking for it, and they will sue everybody attached to it. Wow. It wasn't Jada, though. Was it him and Jada? No, no, no. Oh, no. This was, uh, man, this was way a long time ago. But it was, it was interesting, because he's standing in a room with Money B, who's the uh, little rapper with Digital Underground. At this point, he was a rapper with Digital yeah. Underground, with Humpty Hump. And, and so he's just getting head in the middle of his room. Drinking out of a red cup and talking to his buddy like it's nothing. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the weirdest, craziest thing I've ever seen. That that was a pretty interesting sex tape. So, so what would happen here if uh, the estate knows about it? They're watching you, but the tape ends up getting leaked or released in like Romania or something. Well, then they have a, a situation where they might be best to hire me to go after those people. I actually work with a lot of black hat hacker types that know how to trace these IPs. And I've actually worked as a consultant many times working with a lot of these people. There was a situation many, many years ago with Cameron Diaz. 
where some guys had spoofed their IPs. They put out a press release that they had this tape of Cameron Diaz, and they actually forged my name under this press release, which caused me to be on a mic under a microscope like you couldn't imagine. Mm-hmm. And he went back to Montenegro. So, of course, I had to figure out who the hell was setting me up and what these guys had. As, as it turned out, it wasn't a sex tape. Cameron Diaz went on her very first photo shoot, and there was a topless shoot, and she was leading a guy around in a dog collar. It was a very artistic shoot that was downtown L.A. I and saw that. Uh, yeah. This guy ended up forging her signature. They were able to prove it. He ended up going to jail. A guy by the name of John Rutter. Uh, but yeah, that was a situation where they tried to hide this through many, many IP addresses and had people, and like I said, Montenegro. I didn't even know where Montenegro was. I had a, I had a good little map <laughs> and started looking at Serbia, Montenegro, and Bosnia. I was like, what? So that's part of your job, too, is quash the release of some of these tapes. Well, yeah, I mean, I have to, like I said, I vet them out. I, uh, I figure out sometimes what's the best plan. Is it a story to sell to TMZ that there is an existence of such a tape? Is it something where I could buy it back because I feel the person has the full copyright and they, they can market it? Do I come in maybe half of the celebrity? It depends on how the situation is or if there's any kind of extortion case. Obviously, if someone extorting somebody. I don't want to be involved in that kind of stuff. Or if yeah. somebody's got a hidden camera, which happens all the time, people come to me with a, a purse and they don't people with it. And they might go on one of these PCs from a modeling agency or they might go to a casting call where the director wants to bang them. And then they'll come to me saying, hey, I've got so-and-so uh, you know, trying to put the make on me during a casting thing. What's it worth? And I'm like, that's extortion. You can't film somebody without them knowing unless you're in a public place which then you're in this different situation altogether which are those two and those are a little more tricky for the celebrity mm. so what about the Vern Troyer tape like where, where, how'd you come across that one and that was a that was another crazy tape this is like memory lane I um <laughs> I got contacted by his ex-girlfriend Renee Schreider and I don't know if he's going around the house, but if she's like five foot five, and he's wow. like I don't know, four he's like foot, two foot eight, maybe three nine. I think he's yeah, like he's two really foot small. eight or something. Yeah, he's a small guy. In the first twenty minutes of the video, he's going down on her, and it looks like a fetus trying to re-enter the world. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is he hung watched, like Johnny Carson? No, he's hung like uh, the, the, top, the top of a, a baby bottle. It's like a little nipple. So it was really gross. And, you know, he's standing up and he's trying to get to town. He's got these little sausage fingers and he's falling over. He's making those grunting sounds like he did on a surreal life. And it's like, I'm watching this thing going, oh, this is disgusting. And I look at the girl and I go, Renee, how did you meet Renee? Tra- how did this come about? And she's like, I was at the Playboy Mansion. Uh, you know, I, I met him. I'm like, yeah, it's like, I was taken by his charm and we went home and she's like, and he, he could really go down on, on a girl. He knows what he's doing. And I'm just like looking at this girl going, oh my God. Like <laughs> most people, you know, if they move to LA, they might end up going to a Playboy match. They end up fucking David Spade. They yeah, fuck yeah. Pauly Shore. Bill Maher. They fuck like Scott Bale back in the day. Yeah, Bill Maher. You don't ever hear somebody going, no, oh, mini me. That's the guy I'm going to, that's the guy who's going to further my career, you know? Uh, but she wanted to further her career with it. And it was, uh, that was surreal because I've never seen a little person make it before like that. I and mean, he's a very odd, like I like him and I'm friends with him all these years later. And you know, I feel like I helped it because the tape ended up in wrong hands at one point, And I kind of threw that back into play. Uh, he's a good guy, you know. He was he was taken advantage of by this chick, and uh, mm. the funniest part of that was bringing it to TMZ because I knew that my friends there would probably find it interesting. And Harvey Levin ran in the back in the edit bay as we're all watching it, we're all laughing, and everybody's just literally just like ugh, ugh, and groaning. And he runs back and looks at it because I can't look at this, and he runs. And two seconds later, he runs back. He says, I, "I gotta, I gotta see more. I just have to see more. <laughs> show, show it to me again." I, I, I'm so like I have to see it. So that was very uh, right. that was a really funny one. So is that the weirdest sex tape you've ever come across, or have you come across like no? Oh wow! What's the weirdest no. one? If if you can tell Tom, us, Tom Tom Sizemore. 
by far. The oh, craziest. Man. It was like a Fellini movie on crack. <laughs> Wow, did he? But did he know he was being filmed? This is a movie he made. Oh yeah, he put it out with Vivid. It was called Triple uh, X Tom. I don't. Obviously, it wasn't a big seller. That's one thing that people don't understand. Listeners of your podcast, uh, male sex tapes don't sell. Nobody gives a shit about <laughs> seeing guys. It's not even back in the day when people paid for porn. Girls weren't opening up their purses bringing out their credit cards and buying pornography. It's guys that want to see hot chicks yeah. getting way out. They don't, they don't care about guys. There's only so many gay men in this world that are going to want to see George Clooney or Brad Pitt or Colin Farrell for that, you know, that instance. And that was another crazy story that I could get into. Uh, again, there's just not that many people as interest. And those people, they don't need to make sex tapes to make money. So here's what I'm imagining for, for the Tom size. And correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, yeah, he's going down on a girl, and with one hand he's fingering her, and with his other hand he's punching a dog dressed like a clown. Am I right? Am I correct? Or am I, how far off am I? Well, I urge you to go online and just go how far into that dark, deep net you could get into and find this thing. He is talking into the camera at one point, and he's basically saying, "It wasn't me. I didn't do it. I wasn't there." And this was right around the time he beat up his ex-girlfriend, Heidi Fleiss. You remember Heidi? Uh, you know, the famous madam here. Um, and he had five different porn stars in a hotel room at the Chateau Marmont. There was dildos that he would throw across the room. Lamps were breaking. Girls were running around. There was asshole licking. There was all sorts of stuff going on. You can't even believe it's going on in this room. And then through it all, he's glazed and sweaty and just smoking meth. And, and it's just so disturbing that when you watch it, you just feel bad for the guy, and you're like, holy hell. But she has this condition called a priapism, which is what they warn you about. Viagra. Any erection lasting over four hours, they tell you to what? You know, call you your doctor, go to the hospital. Yeah. It would ejaculate, and his dick still stayed hard. So he kept going and going and going, and it was unbelievable. What about Charlie Sheen? You ever come across anything with that guy? <sighs> Very, very interesting stuff. Uh, I, you know, look, your I wish immediate response well. to that question was you made a noise that sounded like your soul just left your body. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I, uh, I had a friend that was engaged to him a little bit early in his situation than most people do. Because there was a time when all these hookers were coming to me with all sorts of stories about getting rocks and from the size of the fists. And, you know, him wanting to do some strange stuff. And, it was, um, it was interesting. And of course, a lot of it was documented because, you know, he actually ended up getting wheeled out on a stretcher one day uh, when he OD'd. I think it was Paul Nassif, the doctor across the street from him, called the cops, called the paramedics. But they have private ambulance services and they have private doctors, so you, so you don't hear about it. Yeah. This is just stuff that you learn on the other side of Hollywood. So, uh, so Kevin, did so have you garnered a reputation here? Like, if you go to a party, do like a lot of celebrities think you're a scumbag or try to like <laughs> start some shit with you, you know, or what's, anything? What's really funny is I've kind of turned it around these days to where I'm a crisis management specialist. Uh, you know, I That's do good. a lot of television, so they'll call me celebrity celebrity sex tape broker. They'll call me. Uh, scandal specialist, whatever you call me. At the end of the day, I try to help a lot of people out these days. I help them shore up their iClouds. I help them shore up their internet so they don't have these unfortunate events. Uh, I've consulted with many of these people about NDAs at their front doors. Nowadays, when you walk into a celebrity, you know, and I have lots of A-list celebrity friends as well. I don't talk about them publicly because... I wouldn't be in their graces and I wouldn't be by some of the best parties in the city if I did. Um, but of course, yeah, when they first meet me, they're all hesitant. They're all like, wait a minute, you're the sex tape guy? Oh, shit, what are you doing in my house? You know, or am I, am I safe around you? Or is this dangerous to be around you? That kind of stuff. And I have to explain to them, like, that was a long time ago. I have to explain that these celebrities are in on these sex tapes. You don't have a sex tape unless you have the rights of these people. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what I imagine. Even pornographers. Yeah, pornographers right. have to have the rights before you can release anything. And I imagine a lot of these people, like uh, like Farrah Abraham uh, or Farrah Abram, or whatever. I imagine she concocted yeah. some bullshit story about how this tape came out. But really, I mean, it was all planned in advance. Of course, 
it was yeah. all scripted, and it was almost like they took a page out of, I don't want to say my marketing book, but, you know, look, I used to sell the sizzle with the steak, so to speak, and I would come up with, oh, you know, Paris was an ongoing participant, and, you know, she, 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 she had a gun book in her head, so all that stuff's bullshit. To put these things out, they have what's called UC2257. Yeah, that's a, that's the thing. I imagine it has to be compliant if it's going to be released. Well, uh, Kevin, we've sure. we've we've, uh, we've taken up a lot of your time already. Thanks for being on the show. Can I plug anything? Like, where can someone seek your services? Well, you just B L A T T. I'm on Facebook. I, Wait, on... I didn't quite hear that. It sounds like you cut out. Can you tell us one more time? Yeah, I, th- I think our connection's kind of fucked up. I kind of missed that last part. Um, I'll, I'll look up. I'll look up your website and I'll, I'll post your Facebook page as well. Yeah, that's perfect. And if you ever write a book, let me know because I'd love to read it. Because <laughs> I'm sure you got some pretty cool stories. We're working on a short film right now called Paris and Me, and you guys will laugh your ass off. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds hilarious. Hey, thanks for chatting with us, man. Uh, very interesting you got it, guy. Brother. All right, take it Best easy. Of luck. Right. Ciao. Yeah, that guy. That's an interesting guy. That guy. Yeah, I think he needs to write a book. Right. Or you say he's making a movie. Did you say you you were telling me off air that your brother had made a movie about a sex tape broker? He, or he wrote oh, the short a film movie. of going to film it. Yeah. So I wonder if it's, a, I'm pretty if it's sure the same story. based on this guy. Yeah. Oh, based on the guy? I think so, yeah. Huh, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, this guy, you know he has... I would love to party with this guy. Yeah. We should find a way to become friends with Kevin. Okay. And see if we can hang out with him. <laughs> What about my, 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 maybe if we show him my sex tape with Ray J. Johnson, <laughs> but like the old Ray J. Johnson. The know? old Ray J. You could call me Ray, or you could call me J, <laughs> but you don't have to call me Ray, what, right? Isn't that guy? That yeah. sounds fun. Yeah, I fucked him. Anyway. <laughs> uh, people's episode 600 here is Sticking Wrong. We have news stories coming up next, and uh, we have phone calls after that. But first, here's a word from our sponsor, Adam and Eve. It's 